talking to voters, and, and I draw the line at that in every case. I view pandering as selling out what you really believe because you think you can get a few more votes, and I don't believe in that. Edmund Burke said to the electors of Bristol in 1774 that a representative owes his voters not only his vote, but also his judgment. And my judgment, all of my life, has been governed by this document, the Constitution of the United States. In the Supreme Court and elsewhere, I have fought for this document. And I have fought most frequently against the ACLU. And I say so willingly that that's a fight I will continue if that's what you choose to send me to Congress. Campbell, we'll have you address this one. How many folks in western North Carolina commute from rural areas, and as we know, the gas prices are making a lot of these people have to choose between groceries and getting to work. Should Congress support a gas tax holiday from Memorial Day to Labor Day, like Senator McCain has proposed? I, I think that's probably a good idea, uh, to send a message to the American people that Senator McCain, soon to be President McCain, is serious about the energy issue, but I don't think that's a solution to the problem. I think what the Congress needs to do is deal with the energy crisis in a comprehensive way, addressing all aspects of our energy situation in a way that is in the interest of the American people. But I think the first step in that is that we, the people of, of the United States, have to demand that Congress take that action. And I think uh, since 1974, when we had the first gas prices, we haven't done that. We need to make it clear to the Congress that it's time for them to fix the energy policy of this country. And there are ways to do that, but the biggest way is to um, be energy de uh, independent so that we don't depend on foreign sources of oil, but we also have to maximize the resources we have in this country. We have to relook at <laughs> nuclear power, at wind, at any other kind of, at coal, at other high technology um, possibilities to create a, a greater energy uh, resource here in this country, then the nation will have an energy policy where we won't need a holiday from extreme, extreme prices because we won't have extreme prices. One of the things you have to judge in candidates for office at any level is are they willing to flat out lie to you in order to try to trick you into voting for them? There is no cure for high gas prices, I'll tell you why. First of all, because China and India are demanding much more oil, the demand has gone up, the supply has not gone up, economics 101 since the cost goes up. Secondly, the American dollar has become weak against other currencies. That means it costs us more to buy anything overseas, and that includes the price of gas. The only solutions are, first of all, we have a 300-year supply of coal. And coal can be used if, it is, if the stacks have proper scrubbers on them. That's a technical problem, which we have solved. We also have an infinite supply of uranium. And there are countries like France, which gets 80% of their electricity from nuclear power plants. And we haven't had a power plant built in the United States for about 35 years. Or a new refinery. And who has stopped that? The same environmentalists who are yelling at us now. Handouts from Congress, temporary tax breaks based on borrowed money are a perfect example of an earlier question. Congressional pandering to the American people. We need real solutions. We need a demonstration in Washington that they have the courage to face and tackle and defeat real issues, not tokenism designed to seduce us to vote for them artificially. I'll ask you to answer this question first. This came from one of the delegates. Will you support the North American Union and the AmeriCorps, Merico, the new proposed current currency? Why or why not? Absolutely, positively not. No way over my dead body. I hope that makes my The problem with NAFTA is that. Canada is a developed nation like we are. We don't have a problem of hordes of Canadians coming across the border into Montana or Vermont or whatever. On the other hand, 
Mexico is a third world nation. We have become their welfare system. And that is crushing our economy. It's crowding our jails, crowding our schools, crowding our hospitals. Uh, and it's a problem we've got to deal with effectively, which means we have to shut the border. But the simple truth is that NAFTA was guaranteed to fail when we opened up a border with a third world nation. And by the way, I met the face of American harm here. Her name is Wanda. I won't state her last name in public, but if any member of the press wants to ask me afterwards, I'll give you her last name and where she works, and you can check out that I'm not lying to you like Hillary Clinton did about the woman who allegedly died for lack of insurance. She's <laughs> reading. She worked in the textile industry. She worked because she was a single mom getting no support. Two shifts in a plant that is about to close. That's the Coates plant out in, in the western part of the district. She's a hardworking, diligent, capable, very intelligent lady, and she is the face of what NAFTA has done to the United States. It was a mistake as written. It's a mistake now. We will continue to bleed, especially manufacturing jobs. And she was one of the ones who got shipped with the equipment to Mexico to train other people how to do her job, and then she was fired. She is the face of what's wrong with NAFTA. And what you asked about a North American Union is one step worse than that. Is the question North American Union or NAFTA? AmeriCorps, AmeriCorps, excuse, excuse me, say it again. The Amero. Amero, new proposed currency, why or why not? I agree with uh, John. The sovereignty of this nation is the first priority of the government. And protecting it at all a cost is something that we should all be concerned about. I don't believe that it's in the interest of the United States to join in such a pact. But I do believe it's in the interest of the United States to have a trade policy that promotes the economic well-being of our partners. I don't believe the North American Union does that, and I won't support it. The short answer is no. I believe the greatest law-breaking scheme in America's history has been our failure to uphold our own borders. My wife is a nurse. And she talks about a cut on your skin being a portal for infection. America has too many portals for infection. We should do something about that. Now, I disagree with my colleagues. I do not believe that we need a Berlin Wall between us and Mexico. There are places that offense will work, places it won't. I can't picture sniper towers and other things between us and our neighbors or going through our folks' backyards. The best way to protect our borders is to start enforcing our laws and to do something about the people who create the jobs and the money and the attraction that make our borders porous and create a concept which I believe is founded in nonsense, a unification of all three of these countries and others. America, as it is, stands as a beacon <coughs> for the world. Extinguish that beacon in any form or fashion. 